Some time ago I was looking for a new great game to play and it was not that easy to be honest. After failing my search on Steam I went watching gaming youtubers like Splattercat, Retromation or Wonderbots and I found out that game called Vampire Survivor. It looked like a crap so I skipped fast. I made a dinner, come back to my computer and the first thing that I saw was people talking about this game on one of my Discord servers. Something was wrong, this crappy looking game was everywhere. My game is not better but it's still interesting to check what is going on. For a game developer it was clear that I have to make a game study. Hi, I'm Bjorn and I'm making my own game. In this series I'm analyzing games that I played in my spare time, focusing mostly on the feelings that they develop in the player and small design decisions. Worth to consider when making own video games. Feel free to leave a comment, like or sub. Watch till the end for the conclusion. Let's go. We will start from the subjective player's perspective. Main menu was rather disappointing. I'm not the biggest fan of nostalgia as a player. Castlevania inspiration was obvious. I didn't know what I'm doing at start, but controls were simple. It looked like an auto battler. Battler. Battler? By the way, I didn't like attacking with the whip. It was annoying. But feeling ended after a few upgrades. I could choose from plenty of them. It started to look like one of these old school arcade shooters, but somehow different. I thought that enemies will differ a little more, maybe some unique attacks or something, but they were always the same. Only their graphics, speed, HP, and damage were different. There were elite versions dropping upgrades at least. I died fast and decided to check different upgrades. After some time I found out that I'm collecting coins to unlock meta upgrades and other characters. Characters were similar to each other, different graphics, same items, boring. At least at start. At some point I find out that upgrades are able to work in synergy to each other. Characters had their own passives that help in the starting build. There were a lot of ways to fight through the endless waves of enemies. From time to time there were unique events. I was playing unlocking new stuff and I finished the game? I think so? Is it the ending? That's what I thought. But there was an, another level. Maybe a lot more? Who knows? I wanted to play this game for a moment and it took me a few hours. It's an early access, by the way. Now let's take a look at it from the developer's perspective. There's little smiles when saying <laughs> Castlevania are priceless. It's the first thing that will catch attention of older players. Level design is simple but works fine. It's not important here. The main power of this game is being engaging and sometimes addictive I would say. And there are a few things that work well together to achieve it. The most obvious is a progression. Player becomes strong fast. You can see satisfying damage value pop-ups growing up each level. The more damage you deal, the more satisfying it is. People like big numbers. There are many ways to grow firepower. Synergy is the thing here. This game looks simple and trivial but plenty of combinations makes player want to start a new run. Developers did a great thing on an enemy design. I'm not talking about graphics, which I didn't like, but rather smart simplicity. As I've mentioned before, each of these enemies has a few properties like HP, power or speed. And visuals, of course. Adding content of this type is a piece of cake, I'd say. Did you see they don't attack at all? They are just going towards players, so simple AI, but it keeps me playing for hours. How? There is always something new. Even if enemies are always the same, I don't feel that they are. Waves can be surprising to, at least at the first few runs, but it's enough to make player once more. When you want to leave, game unlocks new things like upgrades, tractors, levels, so we want to check it out, playing for next few hours. It takes so long, because when you want to check a new build in the late game, you have to go through early and mid game first. From time to time you will die, from time to time you won't get the upgrades that you wanted to get. Each time you will probably risk the run, wasting your time in the process, but you will want to do this, to prove that you were right this Design this build. What is great in this game is something that I call the scalability. Adding new content is fast and cheap. At the same time, game content grows exponentially with each small change. New item, enemy wave pattern, all of these little things makes player keep playing longer. All of it at low cost. To describe it better, I will use an example of the game with much lower scalability that I've played and like a lot too, which is Disco Elysium. Great game, I'm sure that you like it too. Now try to compare time required to make both of these games. How much effort would it take to add the same amount of playtime for the player? Can you solve this puzzle? There is a big difference for sure. Things that I've mentioned before works well for another two important aspects of success. Replayability and streamability. This game has a lot of abilities as you can see. Actually I wanted to make my own stream while playing. When you play longer than a few hours you will focus on optimizing your gameplay to get higher level until death. This 
optimization is fun to watch. There are a lot of games that fit Twitch streams similar way. So does it somehow affect my game? I was aware of these techniques a long time ago and I am still surprised how efficient they can be used by other developers. Tanima just like any other roguelite has a high replayability by design. But after a while I found out that some things don't scale well, which means that I have to put more effort than I should into making them. The best example would be the story development. Making one scripted scene or scenario takes much more time than a few enemies or power-ups. I think that's similar case in this collision too. This is something that I am aware of and in the next videos I hope to show you an example that showed me that story can be scaled too, but in a different way. It's my first video in this series, I would like to have your feedback so comment section is yours. There is always a room for improvement, let me know what you think. Have fun and see you next time.